Investment Financial Advisors Corporation, a broker-dealer, member SIPC, and registered investment advisor. The views expressed by your hosts, Austin and Landon, are not necessarily the views of Lincoln Financial Advisors. Let's lean in as Austin and Landon connect with this week's Tycoons. Good afternoon, Tycoons, and welcome to this week's episode of Tycoons of Small Biz. This is your host, Austin Peterson, with co-host Landon Mance, and we are excited to have in studio today Randy and Heather Lissarelli of Verapax Marketing. Randy and Heather, thanks for being here. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so Randy and, and Heather, I've known he Heather more than Randy. I've known Heather for a um, little over a year now, and I know, I know Heather to be um, what I would call a humble but strong leader. Um, Heather and I are in a Vistage group today, so I'm very excited to have you guys in, in studio today to hear more about your story. Um, all cards on the table for our listeners. I, I've known Heather, like I said, for more than a year. I've actually heard their story, so I know their story quite well, and I'm, I'm really excited to have them in the studio today to tell that story and, and what they do for our community. So again, thanks for being here. Um, to have you guys tell your story a little bit, why don't we just you know, start at the beginning. Randy and Heather are married. They're a married couple. And just tell us a little bit about uh, how long you guys have been married, a little bit about your family, and then we'll jump into how you got started with the business. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So in 1988, Heather and I met in math 077, which is not even 100 level math because we both were so bad at it. <laughs> but it turned out to be a fortuitous class. And we uh, finished Glendale Community College in Arizona State. We were married one week after Heather finished ASU in the second summer session. So she finished on a Friday and I said, we're either getting married the next day or you get a week. So she said, give me a week. <laughs> um, and then from there, we worked independently for a while, worked with Heather's uh, father for a while. And then I started to get the itch for doing our own thing. And there was a key moment in that when I was at a, call, a friend's house and he was in his backyard and he lived in Paradise Valley and he was just brainstorming, we were brainstorming. And I just got this feeling, I said, yeah, this is, this is what we want. This is what I want for us. The journey, and it really has and is a journey, is not everything that we expected. <laughs> but um, the other thing is when we started in 2000, the idea of us working together was something we were looking forward to. Not everybody does, uh, not every married couple does, but it was something for us that we enjoyed. We've spent a lot of time through the ups and downs and the late nights and, and such, but uh, you know, hindsight, you look back and you think what were the benefits or what are the benefits, what are the uh, drawbacks, and Overall, I think it also depends on when you take the test. You ask that question, you know, if it, the economy is an upswing and you're doing great, it's good. And when it's down and your friends and colleagues are asking you if you have any work before they're going to lose their house, that's kind of humbling. Yeah. And I remember uh, Randy, when he approached me, uh, we were, had just had our first child. And so he approached me and said, I really feel like, we should do our own thing. And um, would like to have you join me in the journey. And he said, I have a feeling it's gonna be quite a roller coaster of a journey, um, like an amusement ride. And uh, he was right, he was really right. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a, a blessing and we've learned a ton um, and it's definitely been a roller coaster. And, and I think what he says is very true. It depends on where you take the snapshot because um, times where, you know, we're there 12, 14 hours a day, you know, not so good. But there are, have been opportunities where we can reach out and help friends and who might need some work. And it's a blessing to be able to have the opportunity to help and be able to say, yes, we can help. And so that's one of the biggest blessings I think is, um, cause Randy and I both, I believe feel that if we couldn't help through what we're doing, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be near as valuable. Um, 
that's a big desire we have is to help our community and those around us. Yeah, and I, I've certainly seen that in my interactions with you guys. And, you know, we've talked about that a little bit over past episodes as well in that, you know, I think a lot of times in the media, business owners are portrayed as money hungry people, right? And, and the reality is most tycoons of small biz are, are not necessarily in it to make gobs of money, right? I mean, we, we want to make a living. We want to take care of our family. We want to do the things that, you know, that we want to do. And we certainly set goals from a financial perspective. But many of us are just as interested, if not more interested, in employing others and giving others a hand up, you mm-hmm. know, and, and, and doing things for our community that make a difference. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I would agree. We've, uh, through the journey, uh, we've had numerous people employed, resign and, in a matter of weeks, and then file unemployment. So the burden shifts to particularly Heather to fill out paperwork to do those types of things, which is one of the many things behind the scenes, as you mentioned, that is not a money generator. It's a time sink, but it's part of the responsibility of ownership that uh, many don't consider when they think, hey, like you mentioned, I'm going to go out and uh, make a lot of money and not have to worry about some issues and stuff. But at the same time, it's key that the people that we do find and work with, they're genuine and they do want to help in addition to us so that the culture that we've tried to create is that family type of culture with those people. So if they came and, you know, they resigned after a few weeks, it meant they weren't a good fit anyway. And we, yeah. we have uh, largely because of the instruction from the Vistage group and uh, wisdom is we've, predominantly established our mission and our core values and uh, everybody on our team is aware of what they are and we go over them every week Uh, and it's part of our hiring process now uh, so that everybody knows in advance who we are who we're about and um, one little snippet that's dear to my heart is we want to make a positive difference in the world around us one person at a time. And I believe we can do that through the business. And I think the days that may be long, maybe longer and a little bit more difficult, that's what helps get us uh, through. But there's there's a lot of great things too. Um, maybe a hard journey, but it's also a very valuable one. Oh yeah, definitely. And and spending time at your business and going on a tour, I can attest to the fact that the people are with you, right? I mean, what I saw, they were they were there, they were all about the culture, they, everybody was rowing together to try to get somewhere. And that's, that's not always the case in small businesses. Mm. Yeah, sorry, we've been fortunate in that sense that even though Heather and I lack certain management skills, that those type of people, as you mentioned, have bought into who we are as owners and they know that we really are interested in helping and have the initiative to say, okay, I know that um, I'm not going to have my responsibilities or accountabilities laid out for me sometimes, but I'm smart enough to take the initiative and say, okay, I need to just run with this and figure it out as we go. And that, I think, makes some uh, some of the people feel really empowered that they know that we're going to back them, uh, mistake or positive outcome. And there have been some mistakes, expensive ones, (laughs) and uh, they get to go home. But, um, you know, they come in, we talk about it the next day, and we just work through it. And that too, you know, among other things is, is one of the things I think, like Heather mentioned, the, the chance, as, as we talked about, to own your own business, for me, it has been a lot about um, self-awareness and what my strengths and weaknesses are and where we can improve and where I'm not so good. So uh, recently someone told me that I'm like on Interstate 5 with all the lanes and I'm swerving across all the lanes and they would like, would you just pick a lane and stay in that lane so that the rest of us don't have to clean up your debris trail? <laughs> and the other half is the guardrail, right? <laughs> yeah, we have team members that are like, stay out of production now. I know you used to do it, but don't stay in your room and do your thing. <laughs> 
I, I'm thinking you must have grown up in Orange County, maybe. I, I just don't know why you would reference I-5 rather than the 10 or the 60, given that we're in Phoenix. But. Somebody, whoever it was, I think it was it's an employee from California, and they just yeah. assumed that I knew all, you know, that there's 50 lanes or whatever it was. But for an analogy, it worked. And gotcha. we have, I think, right now, we have the most incredible team that we've ever had. And the, we'll be celebrating our 20 years in business in November. and. I can't remember a more solid team. Um, and actually, you know, life changed quite a bit when uh, COVID-19 hit and businesses started to shut down and stay at home orders. And uh, it was amazing to sit back and watch everybody get to work and do what they knew how to do to do the very best they could with their skill set. And people brought new ideas. Um, we ventured into different types of marketing. Um, everybody just got to work and nobody looked back. And it was incredible. And so uh, I believe I haven't, I've been like a, a, a proud mama hen really. <laughs> And our weekly sales meetings, I'm like, you guys are doing so good. And I, you know, and I, I feel like I really do need to be more deliberate. Like we, we've learned and, and point things out more to specific people, but I'm kind of just busting that everybody is, we got this, you know, that was their attitude. That's been their attitude all along is we got this, we got each other's back and, uh, that's that's huge. I was going to yeah. say, in a, adding that, I don't think that is as a result of fear of job loss. I think it's as a result of most people realizing this is what we have. We're all together, and we keep hearing that. You know, we're together, but we need to change our attitude a little bit and think creatively. How can we do stuff? And I I believe, like Heather said, that really has brought the team a lot closer with different initiatives and people taking ownership of things that, well, we have to delegate what we're doing. They say, how about this? Or how about that? When we brainstorm, we've had some really good ideas and one's launching this next week. I think next week that one employee came up with. Um, so that's, that's true. That's been fun of late. Mm -hmm. Been good. Yeah. We've established a program called the wow awards. Uh, it's just a little, um, a little sheet. It's anonymous. So if you, see an, another team member doing something extraordinary or just being nice or going out of the way or just anything doesn't have to be anything big you can fill out an anonymous sheet drop it in the wow award box and then the uh the first thursday of every month at our meeting we we do a drawing and then i have a, a prize basket a wow award basket and whoever wins gets to pick a it's not a huge prize, but you know, there's fun little things in there. And I would just like to add, Heather has won numerous times, but disqualifies herself. So last time <laughs> when she went to go get the prize basket, she came in, we all said, yay. And she's like, what? We said, you win this week. No, 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 no. I didn't win. <laughs> so to your point, yes, she's humble and quiet, but she does a fantastic job for everybody. And they all know that everybody what we work with knows that, including vendors. Yeah. Yeah, no, and I, I think everything that you've just talked about is a testament to the culture that you guys have built, right? And, and one other point that, that stuck out to me is talking about innovating, right? And employees that are, that are bringing to you different ideas to do things differently. You know, I read an article last night or this morning by one of our former guests, actually, Brenda Schmidt from Coplex, and she was on, and, or she actually wrote a quick article. You should look it up on LinkedIn, but she talks about, you know, how too many businesses nowadays are going into survival mode and, and survival mode is not thinking about what's next, but it's how do we kind of hold on to what we have? And that's a mistake, mm -hmm. right? We need to figure out how to innovate out of this so that we're all moving forward and the momentum's created forward as we come out of this pandemic or, you know, everything that's kind of going on right now, there's a lot of things that kind of hit at the same time, right? And it can send businesses into, into a tailspin if they don't really kind of pull together and, and innovate their way out of here. It's a really good point. Yeah. yeah. So 
that, that's very cool. So, you know, we've, we've gotten to this 20 years, which congratulations, by the way, I mean, staying in business 20 years, even with the roller coaster that we all know <laughs> it is, uh, is a big, big deal. So congratulations. Thank and, you. Thank you. And uh, I'll look forward to celebrating with you guys in November. But um, so tell us a little bit about how you chose, you know, what you, you decided you wanted to go into business for yourself, which by the way, as a couple, I mean, my wife will tell you, we worked together when we were newlyweds. It did not go well. <laughs> and, and, and my assistant is, is actually moving to Portland, Oregon. And so I'm going to be looking for a new assistant. And, and my wife said, should I do that? And I'm thinking to myself, well, it didn't go very well 21 years ago. I'm not sure if we want, <laughs> if we want to try this again. But um, so, you know, kudos to you guys to figure it out. I'm sure it's not easy. I know that the family dynamic and the, and the business dynamic can get complicated. So, you know, kudos to you for figuring that out. But tell us, you know, once you decide to get into business, how did you decide on marketing and promotional goods and kind of give us a little bit of a sense of how you got to where you are today? So the... Uh, let's say we reverse engineered. So we didn't start out with the idea that this would be the niche that we would start in and a formal business plan together. It was actually more by familiarity. So there was a season in which uh, my dad, his background in IT for Valley National Bank, for those of us who remember, been here a long time, uh, started in the Air Force and is working on mainframes. And because of that history, we had a lot of technology around our house that I didn't realize. So we had the first Apple, Apple II, the first PC and stuff. So that I gravitated towards. And when we had a season where we worked together with Heather's dad, being that component of the business was something that allowed his business to grow. And then as I learned more and challenged myself more and the industry changed, when it came time for us to start, I think it was a natural, in our case, it was a natural transition for, for Heather's dad to say, well, you can continue to do the work that you're doing for me under your own business since what you're doing is pretty much data and exchange of data. So that's how we started into it and said it was familiar to me. I do it and I proposed to Heather, why don't we just move this direction? And it wasn't, it wasn't anything that I think some people have the idea of or, or do, which is I've been in the industry or I've started and I'm going to a change into something different. I'm just, it's looking for career change or changing something different. So it's military. And basically because I became a subject matter expert in that, we ended up doing more of uh, initially printing and mailing. So I, I learned the printing industry and my mailing industry and the changing stuff that was happening with the post office, which was quite a bit. And then one of the plants for us that uh, was our bread and butter for that season was Mayo Clinic. And so Mayo Clinic was sending projects to us primarily because when they started in the virtual data market, so it would be, dear John, we're sending this letter to you because your physician uh, is changing. That, they had tried that internally and it didn't work out twice and some people got really embarrassed within the organization. So uh, we had a call out of the blue. This is again, one of those coincidental things that just happens sometimes from an agency that we were doing work for, where we had just taken on one of their clients and mailing. We had, I had befriended in there from her contact anyone. She said, oh sure. We, because again, out we had here. The, so the initial part of it in there as well as in the studio. So we became, we, uh, we got a company. What, what did I'm saying? Oh, so I jumped the parts and was thrilled. Clients saying, can you when we sell? And that's because we know when a client asks for of trying to that particular touch into some asks, can you do that? Yeah, it's too. So percent of me thinks that yes, we can do this, but and we'll research it and figure it out. Not all too is important for a small business. That's not within our lane. We really want for us and our experience, we found that being willing to, to step up and do, but to do whatever you can. Come. So one on. So uh, Mayo Clinic would at, for Christmas they would or when we work with when they went to they were stuck because they really need thinker. I thought. <laughs> so I was, I think it was like fifty seven. Have this big charge come through. We find this and yeah, you're fine. So sure enough, we put our on it and so we take money. No, I thought that's. We tackle your day-to-day -day work so that you can spend more time building the culture you and your employees crave. For professionals who crave true partnership, Paylocity is the HR and payroll company that frees you from the tasks of today, so together we can spend more time focused on the promise of tomorrow. Let's go forward together. Welcome back, and I think we've got the Zoom meeting back up. Landon, can you hear us okay? 
Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, I, I apologize. I hope that I'm not asking something that was already addressed because I've kind of had a little bit of a um, little bit of an issue hearing you guys clearly. But uh, just before we 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 move on kind of to the next subject, if you will, something that I, I thought was interesting and I think would be valuable to to hear about from you guys is um, in the pre-show notes. I know that you guys mentioned that you, you did some research around the opportunity prior to starting the business to ensure it's, you know, viability, but also to ensure that it provides, um, that it's yes. yeah, that it's first first what we, one of the things that you're, you're talking about is there are books or whatever people have on how to run a business, the sub methods, those types of things. And one of the key questions in uh, the particular path that we tried to follow the model we tried to follow, which was the e-myth was when you think, this is an opportunity you want to pursue. You have to start with your end game and what do you want your exit scenario to look like? And does the opportunity they want to see provide what you want in terms of uh, finances, lifestyle, family, all those types of things? So you may have a great idea, but it's important to do the research to find out well, you know, that maybe the cap of the income or the opportunity could be, uh, let's say $50,000 a year. So is that gonna meet my goal? Is that gonna take care of my family? And if it isn't, then you should really discover uh, something else that's as, that makes, uh, that's more aligned with what you want as your edge strategy. And so for us, mailing was where we started, mailing was where we started. And as we've moved the ball down the field and evolved, marketing by adding other services has given us somewhat of an umbrella in the digital market space to do more. So. We determined when we started that best there is an opportunity there and it can do what we want. We just to sure that we're open, that we're following our financials, we're checking out we're constantly aware of what's going on in the marketplace. And that was a key decision in, in doing what we did. Um, initially, like I said, it became when we first started, it was chasing the client and service them. And uh, financially, it worked out very good. But then we, when we leveraged that to look at, well, what else could we do? We realized the space, there is a lot of opportunity. And for my, one of my likes is understand human behavior, which is essentially kind of what marketing can be, if you want. And learning the search side, the social side, um, kind of being on the other side of the glass, the side of the mirror, and uh, our behavior, that has been much broader and much um, richer for us than I would have imagined at the time. But that was the key component to that part of the uh, notes that I made. Don't start something until you figure out, will this solve, will this meet your expectations at the end? Yeah, no, I think I think that's a great way to look at it, right? Because I think it's Stephen Covey who says, "Begin with the end in mind," yeah. right? And so you you've got to have a plan. But again, to go to to reference Brenda Schmidt again, she had some really good comments when she was on. Is she, she said, you know, sometimes you've got it's the three Ps. You've got to persevere. You've got to pivot or perish, mm. right? And so you're, you're choosing one of those. And, and along the way. You know, if you think back 20 years ago, 20 years ago, there was no social media. <laughs> the web was out there, but websites weren't huge yet, right? And so you've had to pivot a long way to make sure that your business remained viable. And, and I would guess, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but you're probably starting to see some comeback or pullback to mailers again. And people are realizing that there's actually still some value there because I'm sure everybody pushed away and went everything online for a while. And maybe your mailing business dropped. And I'll bet you that you're starting to see an uptick would be my guess. Yes, that's very true. And actually, um, the the post office is innovating also. Um, they're constantly uh, improving the requirements for mailers. Um, they have something now where um, intelligent, <clears throat> excuse me, intelligent mail um, that Randy can speak to a little bit more, but it, it helps you incorporate direct mail with, um, say, your website and a call to action. And so you can tie um, the two mediums together and, and make a very effective campaign. And so, yes, we have seen an uptick in uh, the mailings industry. And um, it's, it's, I think not every mailer is aware of the opportunities out there. Our team is very deliberate about staying connected and staying compliant with uh, the USPS to make sure that uh, we're a preferred vendor. And um, so, yeah, do you want to speak sure. a little bit about the informed? Yeah, uh, of late, especially with uh, the virus, but generally has been tending towards that. Even though the, uh, the volume in the marketplace is reducing, the number of players in the space is also reducing. So with that consolidation, there becomes opportunity. 
And what we've noticed is we have for the last three and a half orders, digital marketers are approaching us saying, can we add this channel to our campaign? Because what used to be considered uh, junk mail in that, like you mentioned, in that messaging, people today, unless they're deliberate, can just get overwhelmed with the amount of digital information they received. So there's something to a tangible physical piece. Sometimes it's special paper, sometimes it's a fold, as well as it's a practical method for what's going on with COVID right now for a geo-targeted radius around a business or getting more segmented with the list opportunity. So households with ch uh, children, households with income, those types of things. And what Heather's talking about is where the post office is just getting crushed financially because they haven't quite done what they need to. But realizing they were getting crushed in that digital space, they started a service called Informed Delivery, which is a free service that any individual can sign up for. And what it is, it allows you to see scans of mail pieces that are coming to your home. And so each day you get an email, you know, or for the mobile app. So you get a notification and you'll see what this is coming in today, that's coming in today. And it's very beneficial to those who are traveling, they'll be able to see what's going on. Uh, oh yeah, that bill's coming in, it comes really hard for someone. And along with that as mailers, if you have the right blend of technology, you can, part of the informed delivery service, just replace the image of the mail, the scan which just has their name on it, with a full color image that can be unique to each person or static across the whole campaign, as well as a hyper clickable call to action. So in a nonprofit context, for example, you can send your appeal letter out and appeal for finances, and then right in your mobile or on email, there'll be a click call to action right to the donation page. And then this post office will provide you the statistics. How many of the 5,000 people you mailed to, what was the universe that are subscribed? So I just did one yesterday where 4,000 people uh, were on the list and over 33%, 35% were eligible, had signed up for the program. So you do a pre-campaign analysis. So that means of the 4,000 people, that pool who are signed up will receive the digital version. And in this case, it was a charter school. It was a call to action was, you know, go register or call us for more information right now. So they're getting an additional touch point at no extra cost for them. And the mail piece distinguishes itself in that because it's color and it has a call to action. So when the campaign is complete, then we download a report and provide to the client that says, there are a you know, thousand pieces and uh, 200, whatever the number ended up being of your campaign, click through to whatever your call to action. And some we work with some partners that have the free domain for that account. So they can track that behavior and analytics and do those types of things and see what the number rate, see what the time. So uh, pages, uh, page I don't see those types of things, uh, but for we're seeing a huge uptick in request for that, and we're one of those, like, we're one of uh, seven mailers in the Phoenix metro area to achieve, to achieve the highest status quality, and that allows us, enables us to perform these types of things, whereas other are not. So we're seeing a lot of political mail and campaigns come our way where they get that additional feature, that additional service that we will implement for them, which is another touch point, visit campaigns specifically, or visit the website, a link button, those type of things, and it's all at no cost um, directly to the campaign. It's something that we just do as part of helping them and bring that value add. I think that's huge. I mean, I. I I seem to feel like I stay up to date on marketing and technology, but I'd never heard of that. I don't know if Landon did, and I'm not sure if Landon can even hear us at this point. We're having some audio difficulties, but he's sending me text messages with what he wants me to ask you. So <laughs> I, will, uh, I will certainly comply with, uh, with what he wants. But that, uh, I think that that could be really cool for a lot of small businesses, right? Targeted, like you said, for restaurants, for mortgage companies, you know, financial planners, like Landon, whatever it is, I think that there's a lot to be accomplished by that. And then nonprofits and political campaigns, I'm sure, are huge. It's, they are. And one of the other uh, one of the other applications is a, a business has an Android CRM will generate a QR code that's unique to that offer for tracking. So if you have it on your mobile, which you should because you have the, um, the app in the post office, you can just walk in, they can scan the QR code right on your device, build it in the CRM. They know the offer is, they know the source, they know who you are, and they get the discount, whatever it is. So you don't physically need to have the mail piece. So you can see that it's coming if it's at XYZ store, you're thinking, oh, I want like 20% off coupon. I'm just going to have there and let them scan it and do that. So that integration uh, as part of the CRM, or just like you mentioned, nonprofit and political space with a number of event gatherings, we use fundraising is a little tricky. So all the action to donate now for those mail pieces that are sending out really at no additional cost and then very beneficial to the candidates that, that understood it and asked us to implement for them. Some are uncomfortable, they're just not sure of it, but those we explain it to generally say, well, that's just like, listen, we'll uh, employ that in the scam. They have a number for 80,000 pieces and the campaign manager in the said, wow, that's it, that's it. It was fantastic. Don't even look, need to look for another place. You offer it. Nobody else even mentioned it. We're with you. So it was a great selling point for us. And yeah, no, I think that for me, if I were a political candidate, we've got a friend actually, oddly enough, I'd know ahead of time he's running for mayor. And I can, I can imagine the, the information that he would receive from that and then just the, the click through and like you said, donations, those sorts of things, or, you know, sign up to have a, a lawn sign put at your, at your house or whatever it is. Like you would think that there's a lot of different uses that they could, that they could use for that. So that's great. 
Landon's telling us that uh, audio is really not working great, so I think we may have lost him completely. So you guys are stuck with just me for the rest of the hour. I apologize. <laughs> we miss you, Landon. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, one of the things that Landon specifically wanted to ask you guys was, you know, I'm sure over the last 20 years you haven't accomplished every goal that you were hoping to accomplish, for sure. right? But there, there have been some goals that you've accomplished along the way. And so how do you think those goals have come to fruition? What have you guys done specifically to have met those goals on? So I'll, I'll take the lead on that one and we'll see if you want to jump in. So um, one of the things that I consider that was not an initial goal uh, that as was just as a byproduct of the process is raising our three kids. So when I say a byproduct of that, the long hours that Heather and I worked uh, and still do, the kids, our three children, uh, who are now 20, 17, and 14, they grew up since they were little. And in fact, it's in the story Heather shared where our youngest one day while we were at the office working on something late, I decided to grab a Sharpie and color her lips, including her teeth, in black. Um, but they grew up in the culture of what it means to be a small business. And for them, it was something that we didn't realize for them to see the hard work that mom and dad put in the long hours. Now, the disadvantage of that was they weren't able to participate in things extracurricular that we would hold. But let's say right now, our um, 20 year old, he's already starting an entrepreneur and he learned many things from us being a small business, how to handle it, what the expectations are, those types of things that others didn't. Um, and our kid will ask us, hey, how did it go with that client? How did it go with that project? They'll actually, they actually run equipment, come up sometimes, help run it together. So as a goal, we didn't set out for that, but that was one thing that, you know, depends on how you look at it. For us, we'll take the positive, which is, they're getting an education that many aren't and seeing a practical application to, I have to go meet with this client. Uh, generally speaking, when I wear pants, they used to say, oh, you have a meeting today. Normally I'm just wearing shorts around. <laughs> I, I got a meeting today. Um, I'd say that's one of the things that like, their personal goals for me have been just understanding my, myself in as I mentioned before, what I'm good at, how I need to relate to others, how we need to build a team, and how important it is to set goals. And, you know, without a runner, you can just toss to and fro. And so you, as you mentioned, having some kind of endpoint in mind and setting goals to achieve that and then monitoring those is just really important. And I think for me, um, you know, Randy had mentioned that we started this journey because of familiarity. He, the familiarity from my point is that um, I used to be the bookkeeper for the, the Point Resort gift shop. And so he said, hey, you know how to do books. Why don't you come and you, you take care of our finances? And I said, I can do that. Uh, and as the business has grown and changed and um, in so many ways, I didn't necessarily have it as a goal in mind, but I have learned a tremendous amount because when you're thrust into a situation, um, if you don't, if you don't have a human resources department, you make one and you go to classes and you learn the laws and you find, figure out the rules and um, so, and, and the benefits and all different things. So the scope of my uh, ability I really had to challenge myself because my initial reaction to things is oh I don't know how to do that that's that's difficult and over the last several years yeah it's difficult but one step at a time little by little you learn and um, like I said not a goal it should have been personal personal growth and, and education but um, it's been a good outcome I don't shy away from being the person I used to I have a better approach of we can do this because of the time we'll be fine. And I like to say on that point, where Heather found her, when she started to code books and then things are more complicated and more complex, we uh, evolved to a point where we needed to do accounting. And the first year of the new accountant looked over Heather's uh, meticulous notes and record keeping. He said, I've had a lot of people in my practice over the last however many years, and he said, you're the first client. I would gladly and willingly shove every piece of documentation you have across the table to my rest of it and said, I'll guarantee you it's in there. <laughs> and I, I say that as she mentioned, she would really um, have stuff out. Now she's a I know this, there are other people who are professionals that they know this. You do a fantastic job. So that affirmation for her, and one of the things you learn personally is that challenge. And one of the things in your three Ps, like, the pivot is also, uh, to me, it's correlated to the knowledge, knowing what's going on in your industry, what trends are going on. It's, it really goes beyond the industry of sustainable global nowadays. I've been three minutes today just following what's going on globally and how that may go down to us. But they're making financial institutions, geopolitical stuff. That's important. And uh, taking the company in a different direction, one of the things you mentioned just coincidentally was you know, from delivery, having somebody in politics um, and uh, the benefits of having 
where they're designed. So the last two years, we've developed, been developing a software as a service that's not as kind of intense, it's equipment-based business, and that software as a service essentially leverages uh, mobile devices and the Google uh, Maps API to allow political campaigns and campaign managers to place their design virtually and then push out through mobile device to all their, their collective um, uh, team members, which signs they're assigned, where they go, have Google Maps do it, when they place it, when they get within 20 feet, place it, the picture uploads it back into the campaign dashboard, so campaign manager gets to see everything. So that we thought we would catch more of this cycle, but we're still going through it, we just have one developer, but that's an example of trying to stay relevant in the space with our marketing experience. So we can do a lot of person pay have you bought or consider whether you're running for a school board and you're managing signs and you want to trouble with local authorities because you forget to pick them up, or after a storm, a monsoon in our case, are they blown down? Can you tell your um, volunteers, hey, please go check the sign, that kind of thing. So it's just a small example of one of those things that we're defending our base, but we're working at trying to stay relevant as we move along. And in the, to the point of need to pivot, right, as we were, were launching and getting me to go full steam ahead is when the, uh, the state shut down. And so nobody was in their cars, betting. And so it was, it was kind of fun at that point to put signs out. So we're just recouping and say, okay. How do we pivot from here? So I think it's very important. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, mean, I think it's an important part of, of every small business, right? Um, I do think some small businesses pivot too often, so it can all be negative, right? And so that can rain. In. Let's take a break here, my last sponsor, and I want to come back and talk about kind of where you guys are today and where we go from here. Welcome to the company. Our value strategy will become a GPS to be part of your family. Let us pay benefits for GPS. We have 30 years of experience in group benefits, a strong purpose, and it shows. GPS, believe in something better. GPSbenefits.com. All right, welcome back. We're again here with Randy and Heather Lissarelli of Verifax Marketing. And uh, we've just been talking a little bit about, you know, their journey along or, you know, throughout the years, raising a family as business owners, positives, negatives to that. Um, you know, I tell you, I've owned my own business, you know, essentially my entire adult life. Um, it's all my kids have ever really known. I've done some consulting along the way. And so they've seen, you know, a little bit of a, I guess, maybe an employer type, you know, because it was consulting for a large company. And so it was almost like an employer type of a, a relationship. And so they've seen both sides. But you know, I think that there's some benefit to what they've gone through. You know, my, my kids are 2017. And I think that there's some, some lessons that they could have learned along the way if they had worked in the business with me. Right. And I mean, it was maybe three years ago. My oldest son said, Dad, what you do for a living has got to be the most boring thing in the world. There's no way I want to do that. And six months ago, he completely has changed his mind. He does want to come to work with dad. And, and uh, you know, so that's what the picture holds. He's, he's on the path to be a sports journalist. And I want to quash that a little. You know, I think it's too early to quash that. He's gone one semester at Arizona State. Um, and so I think he needs to kind of, you know, finish that and blaze his path, so to speak. And I've let him know that the door is always open. But it is interesting to see. And I kind of wonder if it would have pushed him further away or if it would brought him closer if he'd been working alongside me all these years. Right. So I think what you guys have done. Yes, there's some negatives potentially, right? I mean, maybe they didn't get to play the sports that they wanted to play, or maybe they didn't get to, you know, be part of different clubs, whatever it is uh, along the way. But in terms of what they're going to be as contributing adults, I think you've obviously given them some, some very good lessons along the way. So it's nice to get. One of the things we forgot to mention is during our journey, the, um, the addition, in, initial, initially with our kids had their homeschool. And then when the demands of the business got uh, pretty intense, we had to abandon that. And so the kids entered public school. And our oldest is on the autistic spectrum. And so as he left sixth grade and went into seventh grade, he quickly was identified, I mean, literally in the first day of middle school as the kid you can pick on. So we, it was changing his personality and we realized we needed to do something. So one of the other benefits of us having the uh, something was we discovered and enrolled him in online school. So starting from eighth grade for him through high school, he was doing online school, which thanks to the us. And then our little said, you know, that looks pretty good. I'd, I'd like to do that too. So them doing online school, who knew what it would turn into now that, you know, the pivoting so much of the online school is going to be a lot to have to move online. They didn't start as an expert in the fact that they were know And that too was part of the benefit of us together. So not only would they be able to work with us, but doing online school got them familiar with, you know, research and what you have to do, uh, all that's there and some skills I'd throw something at him and say hey go look this up on Google and tell me what it is and like really dad yes please do that <laughs> you know <laughs> some things um, so that being part of the journey like you say it, it uh, it's a half full half empty kind of a thing but we choose to make it look uh, we choose to look at it through the half full and one of the one of the uh, positives is as that online school for our middle as he entered high school ASU started a program a digital online program for high school kids. And uh, they really have made that an opportunity, like you mentioned, where if your high school grades are at a certain point, uh, ASU Prep Digital will allow you to enter concurrently in your school class of 100. So, and that's at no cost. So you, your student in high school, can get a flavor for what they think they like and may discover whether they do or don't without the $2,400 per class bill. Say, you know, I'm 
ten thousand instances. I realized I don't like option A. I want to go in option B. So that is part of that ecosystem that we were able to create and that created itself um, through us being self-employed. In cities, we weren't we didn't really have to worry about cities kids in the money office put the question do not understand those more left in there. <laughs> also, we had, say that. Yeah, no, we, caught and everything. we also um, supplemented with other things um, so they could get out and explore. Um, we supplemented with you know flag football and they were all in theater um, theater group and made it great friendships through uh, theater. And so you just have to be deliberate and creative. Yeah. No, I think you guys, I mean, it sounds like a sound balance, right? And, and they've got some lessons that are really going to be helpful to them as, as it goes on. So, so let's spend the last few minutes. What I want to do is kind of talk about the future, right? And, and where you're going. You mentioned one you know, project is probably going to launch next week. And so if you're comfortable talking about it, if not, you can just talk generally. But, you know, one of the things that I've seen since the pandemic hit, and you guys have mentioned it a little bit as well, is that a lot of small businesses or even larger businesses have kind of reined in their marketing budget and their advertising budget and, and think, you know, we've got to kind of put our arms around this, you know, put in a lockbox, I'm going to say with social security, right? <laughs> put, put the money in a lockbox and, and just kind of hold on to what we've got. And, and I think that's a mistake. I think that if you have the ability, not every business has the ability, right? But if you figure out a way to financially still get marketing done, you'll actually ride this wave out stronger as time goes on. So, you know, talk specifically to that and what the future holds. Well, and that, that's a great, uh, discussion point. So as we talked about thinking creatively and pivoting, what we realized is other small businesses like us, especially as you mentioned, will have tendency to pull back. So what we've done is change our offering and made bundled low cost packages available to businesses for 300 bucks. So if you can afford 300 bucks, we'll market to uh, 3,000, 5,000 homes for your retail-based service or your service for uh, pool cleaning or whatever. It's somewhat like a Valpac, only we're using a different targeted list and we're trying to be sensitive to the budget as well as signage, um, sometimes a mailer. So we want to be flexible with them to see if we can help them understand this is an opportunity as perhaps, unfortunately, competitors are closing. We would like to encourage you to get the message out and do a call to action to kind of offer to make sure that you're at least in communication. And that was something... We came up with literally a brainstorming session on a Thursday in one hour, and next week we had the marketing both together on that, and then the following week we had a literature ready to go, and we were hit street ourselves and using it across our social channels. We had one of our uh, salesmen who's from Brooklyn, likes to go door to door, knocking on doors, and within within about four weeks, we have landed about three eight new clients that have taken on that opportunity and said, "Yeah, you know, I'll take that because budget is right and the reach is good." Others have said, "Well, what else can you do?" So we've uh, I'd say part of that bundling will offer them uh, signage storefront if they're brick and mortar and they have the signage, uh, we've offered signage for them. So that's during this time. And we're trying to encourage them, you know, we want to partner with you. We want to help you. And we don't want to take advantage of you. Uh, if there's other things that we can do that will help you uh, with no cost, that's important. So as who knows how long we do this, we'll also work with some businesses who've not even claimed their Google My Business listing and teach them how to take care of that and uh, grow some some, even if they have a shopping cart, put some links on there to sell, some coupons to get some of that stuff going. So we're trying to empower a lot of small businesses to use and manage tools that they may already have and not be aware of. Um, we've been, as you mentioned, we've been in constant contact business partner since 2001. I used to actually call the phone and speak to Alex Stern, the founder. And I'd say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. And he'd be like, hmm, that's an interesting idea. So we encourage people to leverage that if they're not doing it, how to collect uh, stuff. Even, you know, there's still businesses nowadays who say, I'm really focused on my core market. It's not something I'm good at. I have a small budget. What can I do? And so those, that's our messaging now. And what we're trying to do is pull back and say, what is your budget? And let's throw some options at you that you can consider that we feel are beneficial and that can help you stay in this, keep in front of people and be ready as the opportunity presents itself. And one of the other things too is, you know, the restaurant industry has been hit pretty hard. Uh, initially, we, uh, we did an initiative where we would just say, hey, we'll print 500 coupons for you at no cost just to try to get the word out to your neighbors and so forth. Uh, and recently we just launched, uh, launched uh, safeandcleanmenus.com where restaurants can go on and purchase recyclable menus at a very reasonable price. Um, so that you don't have to worry about whether or not there's, you know, um, keeping your clients, your customers safe. So there's a lot of different things, like you said, being creative, um, thinking about how we can help them. We've done a few things for uh, small struggling businesses to, to do, you know, give 50% of the proceeds to this, this um, organization, whatever. So just trying to reach out in the midst of, there's a lot of hurting people out there to see how we can help and um, 
as yeah. part as part of that outreach that was directly for some businesses where we created a product specifically for, specifically for them, allowed them to have a part uh, added part to that for them, and whatever we collected, like I said, fifty percent would go to them. And the program I mentioned about targeting um, uh, our own program to mail to uh, certain geographies, the ten uh, percent of those proceeds were giving back to the uh, we're still we're still deciding about it, but either the police department, first responders, something like that, so that those who are participating in the program can also get the benefit of saying, oh, well, I'm doing as well, and we're all helping each other together. And that appeal, as though they're getting marketing, and we're all trying to work together and help first time responders with police power. It works out. Um, that too has created that community of people can work together. We've got a partner in you, and um, it really has drawn a lot of us sort of together. It really saddens us to see those that have not made it through or those that are right on the edge. Because as you mentioned at the beginning, it's really one of our heart's desires is to be able to create employment and opportunities for other people to learn and grow about themselves. And when we see that, it's, it's, uh, it's bothersome. So we're doing what we can to help. And one of the fun things actually is being able to see people's businesses and finding like we have a client who has a little um a little burger shop and his his hamburger is adorable his, his little hamburger guy and i was talking to the salesman this morning and i said i love that hamburger we need to make a, a squishy of the hamburger or we need to make something or what about seekers you know seekers on water bottles or for the kids or whatever you know and so he said, okay. so uh he went and he talked to the, the individual and we're going to design his hamburgers now for and, and i'm so excited because the the hamburger is just the cutest thing ever so. <laughs> the logo we have a logo we created for him yeah. yeah no i think i think that's awesome and i think you know we could we could talk for hours about this i think what we should do is have you come back probably next year or six months down the road and, and hear a little bit more for me personally i i'm going to be following closely the safe and clean menus.com i think you guys have really figured something out there um in different men, uh, restaurants that i've been to in the last several weeks you know some of them have been, you know, you know, just hold on to that. That's yours, right? Because we're not taking it back. And then other places have handed me a wet menu. And I'm thinking, ah, I, yeah. I, I appreciate that you wiped this down, but yeah. that's gross. You know, I don't want, and I don't want to be touching a wet menu when I'm getting ready to order my dinner. So bleach and ammonia, a little bit of a turn off as you're getting ready to try and eat something <laughs> as well. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, we, we are running up against time, but I, I really want to thank you guys for being here today. I look forward to hearing more about the story. Obviously, I've been in touch all the time, but. Um, I really appreciate the story where you guys are doing this and look forward to the success you guys. Thank you so much for inviting us. Yeah, thank you. Tell us real quick website and social media channels so that our listeners might be able to hold it. So our primary have multiple brands, but our primary brand is Arapax Marketing, which is Arapax.com. And within that are the breadth of our service offerings. And then we're creating the sub-properties, which each have their own brand, which we're developing, which is uh, Safe to Clean Menus. Uh, one of the at mailing shops that we acquired is AccurateAZ.com. And then the political tool that I mentioned is politicalsellingmanager.com, which I bought the name in 2010, which aged as long as I had that idea. Um, so those, and uh, we have all those channels, but now not so great pushing out content, but we're working on that, especially we've been trying to work through these initiatives and trying to focus on that. We really focus more on the business that we're having rather than ourselves. We're not really doing this for the we're helping give them a shout out, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I was just going to say, um, I just said, it, um, it was a great job today. It was a team effort. And Heather made that last play, and I'm really thankful that we won the game. And I was going to say that from here. So thank you, Heather. Even though it was a team effort, made that last shot, woo, we won. <laughs> All right, on that note, thank you very much for being here, guys, and we look forward to watching your success over the years to come. And much to see you, too. Thank you so much. Thank you. You've been listening to Tycoons of Small Biz, proudly hosted by Austin Pearson and Landon Mitz. Austin and Landon are conferences by Nindle and Nindle Professionals, specialized in financial, estate, and specialized in for small business owners. Austin and Landon are offices in Scottsdale, Arizona, and Las Vegas.